When it comes to exploring contemporary music, I think it's pretty clear to see that we've come a long way in the past 100 years. This is obvious when we compare the sound of music from now and then, but more than that is the themes presented in the songs. Many themes in today's music, like self-love and Ariana Grande's Thank You Next, are themes that wouldn't have existed 100 years ago. Even musicians writing openly about their sexuality is still a pretty recent change in the musical sphere. This is why I think the 1960s were the golden age for music, not just in sound quality, but also in lyric quality. There was a lot more music addressing issues on society, which mainly came through during the counterculture movement. And the songs all came from great artists. Obviously you had amazing bands like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the Beach Boys, as well as amazing musicians like Bob Dylan and Paul Simon. And among them you had the Velvet Underground, equally as influential as these bands and artists, but even more innovative. I think that what the Velvet Underground were doing during their time pushed the limits for what could be a song, and by doing this, expanded the possibilities for what music would become. In case you don't know, the Velvet Underground were an American rock band who were based in New York City. They didn't receive a lot of praise during their time, and many of their records sold poorly as well. Despite this, they were able to create four of the most influential and critically acclaimed albums during the 20th century, and I don't think it was by accident. The sound that they presented on their first record, The Velvet Underground and Nico, otherwise known as The Banana Album, was a combination of beautiful pop songs like Sunday Morning and Femme Fatale, Sunday morning. paired with more straightforward rock and roll like There She Goes Again, and challenging, noisy compositions like Venus and Furs and Heroin. While presenting these sounds, they also presented themes of anxiety, drug dealing, sadomasochism, drug use, and prostitution through their songs. While these weren't all new song topics for music, this album set a higher bar for what could be considered lyrical content for songwriting. On their second album, White Light White Heat, the Velvets took everything abrasive about their sound on the Velvet Underground in Nico and amplified it, which is plain to see by songs like I Heard Her Call My Name and Sister Ray. This album was also consistent with the challenging themes on their first record, with songs that talks about methamphetamine, a botched surgery, and a failed orgy. Yes, you heard me right, a failed orgy. But the album in which I believe the Velvet Underground achieved greatness was with their self-titled album, simply The Velvet Underground. In a way, this album musically presents everything that was soft and nice about the Velvet Underground and Nico, and makes it sound softer and nicer. The challenging song subjects are still there, but they shift to focus on themes of love, beauty, identity, and freedom. It's a dramatic shift from their previous album, and I think you can really hear the sound coming through on the opening song, Candy Says. Candy says. The sweet arpeggiated guitar melodies and bass float over a subtle drum groove, with the cherry on top being Doug Yule's voice. I always feel like I'm floating when I listen to this song, it's really transformative. We see the sound continued on songs like Pale Blue Eyes, with Lou Reed singing softly and sadly over Sterling Morrison's sweet guitar melodies. Sometimes I feel so happy. There's a rhythm guitar and bass in the mix keeping everything mellow, and the only percussion in the song is Mo Tucker's tambourine playing softly in the background. Sterling Morrison also presents a very nice guitar solo towards the middle of the song. There are a couple more straightforward rock and roll songs in this album, most notably What Goes On and Beginning to See the Light. There's even a more avant-garde song in the mix, titled The Murder Mystery, featuring various spoken word passages sung by two singers at a time, finally escalating into harsh pianos. While these songs do give the record the momentum it needs, the real focus is on all the soft songs on the record. For instance, Jesus offers a really nice meditative quality to the album. And it almost comes off as off-putting, because you can't tell if the lyrics are being sung sincerely or not. Help me find my proper place. Doug Yule and Lou Reed's vocals blend very well together on this track, but their guitars blend even better. The song I'm Sent Free offers a more straightforward sound to the record. While it's written like a ballad, it offers a much more majestic chorus that creates a really strong sensation on the listener. And there's even a nice moment during the second chorus where Marine Tucker hits a hi-hat before meeting it. It's a really nice touch that adds a lot to the song. There's a lot going on with the music on this whole album. 
There's unconventional chord progressions, unconventional drum playing, and distinct singing that you don't find on most rock records. Obviously there's a lot of skill going on to the songwriting on this record, but I think the lyrical themes of this record really tie everything together. We see Lou Reed, the principal songwriter of the record, at his most vulnerable. He's still writing rock and roll, but he's also pouring his heart out into these songs. If we go back to I'm Set Free, we see him describing as somebody who's quote, set free to find a new illusion. The song feels really empowering, but the lyrics also present somebody who's been through a lot. Regardless of what inspired it, I think that this song resonates with everybody a little bit differently. On Pale Blue Eyes, arguably one of the best cuts on the record, we see Reed even more vulnerable, being more honest. The lyrics show him describing a relationship with somebody that he missed very much, and it isn't until the last verse that we find out the song's about an affair he partook in with a married woman. The Velvet Underground weren't the first band to write a song about adultery, and they won't be the last, but I think it's so rare to hear a song from the person involved in the affair telling the story, and make the event sound beautiful of all things. The Velvet Underground came from a time where people started to view love in different ways, which we see in cases like Woodstock, and it's really interesting to see how they interpret it on some kind of love. A story about two people saying that no kinds of love are better than others. But I think the song that really shines on this record for lyrical content is Candy Says. The dreamlike quality in this song describes a transgender woman named Candy, who says that she's quote, come to hate her body. Candy was an actress during the late 60s, and was friends with Andy Warhol and Lou Reed. It was very rare to see artists writing about people who were transgender during the time, and while there definitely were more examples of songs, the Velvet Underground style to this song is much subtler and much more beautiful. What makes this song more interesting is that when Doug Yule was singing the song, he didn't know it was about a person, and I think it added to the song's effects, because in a way, Candy Says is a much more universal song about self-reflection. Or as Reed says in an interview, quote, about something more profound and universal. A universal feeling I think all of us have at some point. We look in the mirror and we don't like what we see. I don't know a person alive who doesn't feel that way. Given the fact that we live in a world that still struggles for equality, the song has aged incredibly well, and I think it still remains relevant for today. It has not only been able to resonate with different people, but I think that this song and many others on the record help give future artists a better platform for self-expression in their music. Whether it be Ariana Grande with Thank You Next, Brock Hampson with Star, or Billie Eilish with Sandy. Whether or not any of this music resonates with you or not, it can't be ignored that this music and all music has had a huge impact on society. It inspires and advocates for change, and I think it will continue to do so for many years to come. Whether we listen to music from now or 50 years ago, we can still make connections from our ears to our heart. So please give this album a listen. One, two, three. If you close the door, the night could last forever.